The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art so... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Now the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, a nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. What's happened? What's wrong? Nothing's happened. Why are you all out of breath? Well, Parker said it was important, some emergency. Kildare, lock the door. Huh? I said lock the door. Don't want to be disturbed. Oh. But you're all right. Are you busy, Kildare? No, not a bit right now. Good. I thought we uh, might indulge in a game of checkers. What? Do you mean you went through all this mystery just to... Quiet, Kildare, quiet. The walls have ears. I'll set up the board. <laughs> all right, let's live dangerously. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. It's confoundedly quiet around here, isn't it? So quiet that... Well, this afternoon, it's getting on my nerves. That's only your diagnosis of what's getting on your nerves. What do you think's getting on my nerves? The 75 cents you owe me for the last three times we've played... Do you mean to infer I'm a poor loser, Kildare? Shh, the walls have ears. Now, you listen to Go me. Go ahead, I'm... move your man. Well, uh, let me concentrate, and I will. I'm in conference. I can't be disturbed. Well, all right, Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Carew's on his way down with some people, and I thought you might like to put away that checkerboard before they got there. Ah, splash. Zounds, mate, we've been discovered. I'll put the board away in the bottom drawer here. And... I'll unlock the door. Now, how did you know we were playing checkers, Parker? Why else would you lock the door? Right in here, Mr. and Mrs. Van Cort. Our doctors are very busy, but I'm sure they'll be very glad to spare you a moment. Uh, Mrs. Van Cort, uh, may I present Dr. Gillespie? How do you do, Dr. Gillespie? How do you do? And Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare. Very happy to meet you, Mrs. Van Cort. And Mr. Van Cort, Dr. Gillespie and Dr. Kildare. How do you do, Dr. I suppose you and Dr. Kildare are struggling with some knotty problem, Dr. Gillespie? We are indeed, Dr. Carew. <laughs> That's our staff. Always busy. Just what is your problem, Mr. Van Cort? It's our son. Huh? He's disappeared. He, he's been gone for two days and two nights. There, there, Mrs. Van Cort. Never you mind. Dr. Gillespie and Dr. Kildare will find him for you. We'll find him? <laughs> but, Dr. Carew, we're not detectives. Nonsense. Of course you are. You're excellent detectives, both of you. Why, look how you found that boy in the Leona Carter case. And... But this is a matter for the police, Dr. Carew. Oh, no. No, not the police. I, I couldn't bear for the police to subject poor Philip to all that publicity. Well, you promised us you could do something, Dr. Carew. And so I will. You just put your complete faith in Dr. Gillespie and Dr. Kildare. Well, you see, Philip had all that publicity when he came back from the war. And it upset him so yeah, We're convinced that it's some sort of mental illness that has caused our son to go off like this. Uh, that's why we came to Dr. Carew. Oh. You don't suppose he's eloped, do you? Oh, Philip wouldn't do a thing like that without talking to his father and mother first. Well, whether he would or not, who would he elope with? The only girl that he's gone out with has been Irene, and I'm sure that he isn't interested in her in that way. Wh why are you sure? Well, Irene was engaged to Phil's best friend, and the boy was killed in the war. Oh, oh no, no, Phil's had no particular interest in girls. The only thing I have known him to show any interest in is airplanes. Planes? Mm. 
What did Philip do in the war? He uh, piloted a P-51. Oh, yes. Was he wounded? No, but he had a pretty bad case of war nerves for a while when he first got back. Uh, Mrs. Van Cord, when did your son leave the house? Two nights ago. He said he had a date. Did he say with whom? No, no, he didn't. Oh. Well, I don't know if we can help you, but we'll certainly be happy to try. Would you write down the name and the phone number of the girl you spoke of? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, by the way, have you a picture of your son? Uh, yes, I have one in my wallet. Well, may I borrow it? I'll take good care of it. Of course. Now, don't you worry about this another moment. Just leave everything in the hands of Dr. Gillespie and Dr. Gildare. Here's her name and address. Well, thank you both for your courtesy. I'm sure you know that anything you can do will be deeply appreciated by both of us. And if you are able to help my son, I'll certainly show this hospital my appreciation in a very tangible form, Dr. Carew. <laughs> well, there, there. Not another word about that uh, right now. Come, I'll walk to the door. Now, what do we do? Well, I guess we go and see... Uh, let me see that piece of paper. Oh, Irene Howard. <laughs> Miss Howard, I'm sorry to have to bother you, but... Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Van Cord asked us if we would. Oh, I'd be glad uh, to do anything I can to help Philip. Uh, have you any idea where he might be? Well, I don't know any more about it than his parents do. You two didn't have a falling out about anything, did you? Good heavens, no. It would hardly matter to Philip if we had. We've been friends a good many years, but never anything else. As a matter of fact, I was engaged to marry Phil's best friend. Yes, we know that. Well, I, I think that's the only reason Phil pays any attention to me at all. He and Paul had been pals since they were kids. Even the war didn't separate them. They were both in the same air squadron. Phil even saw Paul shot down. His plane was just in front of Phil's when it happened. Maybe he went out to the airport. He hangs around there a lot. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, hello, Mrs. Van Court. Oh, yes, they're here now. Say hey, what? Really? But where? Oh. Oh, I'm sure it's nothing like that. I'm sure he's all right. Yes, I'll tell them. I'll call you back later. Goodbye. They, they found Phil's car at Brighton Beach. Really? Was it empty? Yes, his overcoat was in it and his wallet. His money, his identification. The police just called her. Well, it's in the hands of the police, then. Hey... They think it's suicide. I'll go down and have a talk with the police captain. No, I think we should take a ride out to Brighton Beach. Oh, all right. You go your way and I'll go mine. I'll see you back at the hospital. Well, Dr. Kildare, oh. what brings you out to Brighton Beach this time of night? <laughs> oh, my... I'm just looking for a young man, a, a patient of mine. I just came out here on a hunch. Hasn't turned out to be a very good one. Hmm. What's he look like? Believe it or not, I don't know. Never met him. His parents asked me to help him. The boy's evidently suffering from war nerves or something. I have a picture of him here. Though. Let me flash my light on it. Hmm. Well, now, I just may be able to help you. I'm not sure, but uh, there was a young fellow sitting on one of the benches looking at the ocean. Uh, he looked a bit like that. Come on, let's have a look. Good. Yes, he's still there. Let's have a closer look, shall we? Yeah. A little too dark to tell from here. Uh, I don't know. Let me speak to him. Hey, excuse me. Is your name uh, Philip Van Court by any chance? What? What did you say? He sure looks like that picture. I said, uh, is your name Philip Van Court? Mm, no. What is your name? My name? Why, uh, my name is... Uh, wait a minute, I'll think of it in just a minute. Uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> isn't that funny? I don't know. I don't know what my name is. Look, I'm, I'm Dr. Kildare. I'm with Blair General Hospital in New York City. Now, if you're who I think you are, your parents are half crazy looking for you. I haven't got any parents. They're dead. Oh? What was their name? I... I don't know. Uh, what's that newspaper in your pocket? I don't know. May I see it? 
Sure. Hmm. Phil, will you come back to the hospital and let me try to help you? Will you, please? Sure, I'll go with you. Why not? I haven't any place else to go. Sure. How'd you make out with the police? Oh, well, I found out everything they know, which is darn little. They picked up his car with the overcoat on it and no trace of the boy. Mm. Sometimes you can find out more from the cop on the beat than the police captain. Like what? Like uh, what bench the boy you're looking for is sitting on. Oh, yeah. Have you found him? <laughs> Not sure. What would you call Mr. and Mrs. Van Gort and ask them to come down? I, I don't want to phone in front of the boy. And then if you'll come down to my office, you can talk to him yourself. Well, d does the boy you found say he's Philip Van Cort? He doesn't know who he is. doesn't know how he got to Brighton Beach or what he was doing there. Oh, here. Read the headline on this paper that was in his pocket. Plane crashed airport. Well, this doesn't mean you found Philip Van Cort. No, well, maybe not. But I do know I found myself a patient. Bill, uh, this picture looks like you, doesn't it? Yes, it certainly does. Would you look and see if you have any identification of any sort in your pockets? I did. I haven't. Why are you holding your arm like that? It's uh, crippled. I can't lift it. Oh, wonder how that happened. It happened during the war. How do you know? Why, uh, I just know. Oh, my arm hurts. Yeah, let me have a look at it. Uh, don't touch it. It hurts. I, I don't want you to touch it. All right, I won't touch it. I... I can't lift it. I... I'll never be able to lift it. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Van Cort here in the hall, Jim. Is all right? Oh. Oh, Phil, this is uh, Dr. Gillespie. How do you do, sir? How do, son? Phil, the people are here that I told you about. Will you let me bring them in? Their son's been missing for over two days now. Of and... course. All right, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, come in, Mr. and Mrs. Van Cort. Oh, Phil, my son, my son. Where have you son. been, my boy? We've been frantic. Oh, don't ever give us a scare like that again. What is it, Phil? I don't know these people. Phil! I'm not Phil. Don't you understand? I'm not your son. Oh, Phil, don't frighten Mother like that. Don't. Please, Mrs. Van Court. Phil, I'll tell you what I think our next move is. I believe I'll put you to bed and let you get a good night's rest. We've had a long day, and in the morning, we'll talk things over. Jimmy, why don't I take Phil down, get him fixed up with a room while you talk to Mr. and Mrs. Van Court? All right. Good night, Phil. See you in the morning. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Gilder. Good night. Good night. Good night. That's our son, Dr. Gilder. Yes. He has amnesia. Is that it, Doctor? Yes, that's it. What are we going to do? Apply psychotherapy. You, you can cure him, can't you? We stand a pretty good chance if we can find out what brought on the attack of amnesia. I think I know. I may be wrong, but I think I know. We'll return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie.
How'd you like the movie? Well, it was all right. Why you insisted on dragging me to a movie at this time of night? Just thought a little relaxation wouldn't hurt. What do you think caused it? Caused what? Amnesia. Do you think that news headline had anything to do with it? Yes, yes. Air crash might have done that. Might have brought back too vividly something you're trying to escape. Mm Mm-hmm. Complete emotional hysteria. Yeah. If this is true, have you decided how you want to treat the boy? Well, your favorite method has always been narcosynthesis in cases like this. That's exactly what I'd advise. Better have the boy's parents in tomorrow and talk to them about it. Mm. I'll call them first thing in the morning. Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie, we brought Irene with us because she... Well, she almost seems like one of the family to us, and she's been so distressed about Phil. Irene, uh, would you permit an old man to ask you a most personal question? Of course. Are you in love with Phil? Yes. I have been for a long time. I was just a little late realizing it. You see, I'd written to Paul and broken my engagement to him about two weeks before he... Before he was killed. Oh, does Phil know that? I don't know. He's never mentioned it. I see. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Van Court, I, I wanted to explain our method of treatment in cases like this. You see, along with the attack of amnesia, Phil has a partial paralysis of his arm. Now, there's absolutely nothing organically wrong with the arm. So, Dr. Gillespie and I believe the amnesia and the paralysis are related. We'd like to use what we call the narcosynthesis method. Mm, that's been used quite a lot since the war, hasn't it? Yes, yes, it has. What is it? It's a little technical, but I'll try to simplify it. We dull the pain sense of the ego so that repressed things may come to the patient's mind and be confessed. Once they've been expressed, then they no longer constitute a threat to the ego, and the energy which they formerly used up can be transferred to more useful function. How will you go about this with Phil? Well, first we'll darken his room and... Then I'll talk to him for a while and explain to him just how we're going to try to help him. And when he's sufficiently relaxed and ready, we'll inject sodium pentothal into a vein. Then I'll ask him to count backwards from 100. And when he becomes confused and is unable to count correctly, we'll be ready to begin the treatment. still hear me, can't you? Oh, yes, Dr. Kildare. Tell me about Paul, Phil. Paul was my friend. We were buddies. But Paul fell in love with Irene. Were you in love with Irene, too? Yes. But she was in love with Paul. She was engaged to him. I, I meant nothing to her. She didn't know how I felt. And Paul didn't know. I didn't let anyone know. But he kept talking about her, though. All the time overseas, he kept talking, talking, talking. What happened overseas, Phil? It was a raid. It was a raid. The raid! Paul's plane was in front of me. It was was just in front of me and a little below me. I saw the Nazi plane die for him. I could have shot him. I could have saved Paul's life, but I couldn't move my arm. I... Couldn't move my arm. It was paralyzed. I couldn't move it. I couldn't move it. Nazi plane shot Paul down. Yes, the Nazi plane shot him down. I got the Nazi, but it was too late to save Paul. And as I, as I watched his plane fall, I found myself thinking, I can marry Irene now. I can marry Irene now. But, but I couldn't marry her. I never can marry her. How could I marry her when Paul is dead? Because of me. He's dead and I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. Oh, I killed him. All right, now. Killed all right. Him. All right. You were out to the airport the other night, weren't you? You saw a man get into a plane, take off and crash. Now think, Phil. Think. Yes. Yes, I was at the airport. All of a sudden, my, 
My arm, I couldn't move my arm again. I know. Now, Phil, listen to me. Listen very closely. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, I hear you. All right. Irene loves you. She wasn't in love with Paul. She's in love with you. She wrote a letter to Paul breaking her engagement two weeks before he died. She's in love with you. In love with me? Yes, with you. Now listen, Phil. Concentrate on what I'm saying. It isn't your fault that Paul died. Your arm didn't freeze on the gun because you wanted Paul to die. It was caused by the fear and terror. You didn't kill Paul. Paul died at the hands of the enemy. You wanted to save him, but it was beyond your power. You were willing to save him. You tried to save him. Tried to save him? Yes, you tried to save him. Phil, your arm is perfectly all right. It isn't paralyzed. Now I want you to lift it. That's right. Lift it. There, you see? Now extend it toward me. Now that's right. Now over your head. There. You see, your arm is all right, Phil. And so are you. You're all right. I'm all right. I'm going to leave you now. I want you to rest and sleep. And when you awaken, you're going to know who you are, and you're going to be well. You're going to be well, Phil, in mind and in body. And then you're going to get up and ask Irene to marry you. Ask Irene? Yes. Irene is going to marry you, Phil. She's going to marry you. Well, Phil, goodbye and lots of luck to you and Irene. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kildare. I still can't believe that she actually said yes. <laughs> you ought to believe it. My goodness, I practically proposed to you. <laughs> <laughs> we run a matrimonial bureau here as well as the hospital. Too. <laughs> well, isn't it nice to see everyone so happy? Okay. Hello, Dr. Carew. Phil is leaving the hospital today. I know. Well, I told you just to leave everything to Dr. Gillespie and Dr. Kildare. Uh, will I have any uh, recurrence of the amnesia? No, no, Phil, no. The cause for the amnesia has been removed. You have nothing further to worry about. <sighs> well, I know one thing. I certainly feel like a new man. Uh, Dr. Carew, I have a check here made out to the hospital. I wanted to make a donation to show our great appreciation. Well, now, that isn't at all necessary, but how very nice and thoughtful of you. On behalf of Blair General Hospital, I thank you. Of course, you shouldn't have done it, but I know the thought of the countless people who will benefit from your generosity will give you boundless pleasure. It will indeed. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you again. Oh, goodbye. Lots of luck to you. Goodbye. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, that's that. Have you any emergency cases this afternoon? No. Well, <sighs> lock the door. Uh-oh. All right, I'm with you, mate. Uh, where were we on this check again? No, uh, don't spill the checkers. It was oh, your move. Oh, that's right. That's right. That, uh, so oh, it was. You're right. <laughs> now, Kildare, keep your wits about you because I am going to assassinate you right here and now. Oh, just because you owe me 75 cents? Just don't know how to lose, do you? Never mind that. Never mind. It doesn't matter if you don't know how to lose, Kildare. Always remember as you go through life, the only thing that really matters is knowing how to win. <laughs> We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment.
once again the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, 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 I must say I am pleased. Very pleased indeed. Uh, Mr. Van Court uh, made a very generous donation. You are fine doctors, both of you. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Carew. Can I have an extra dish of ice cream for my lunch? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite, quite. Oh, I get it. Well, you certainly can. You certainly can, dear fellow. You too, Kildare. Oh, thank you. Well, I must get back to my office. I have so much to do these days. I just wanted you to know that I'm well pleased. Well pleased. Another piece of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. There's a man with a great sense of humor. Yeah. Maybe we should put him under sodium pentothal and find out his hidden desires and motivation. I wouldn't recommend it, Dr. Gillespie. All you'd find would be a great big dollar sign. Quite so, Dr. Kubler. Yes, I thought your diagnosis would concur with mine. Well, now shall we lock the door and return to our game, Dr. Gillespie? By all means, Dr. Kildare, by all means. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Gene Holloway and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Sam Edwards, Ted Von Helse, Gene Bates, Sarah Selby, and Dick Simmons. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 